Hi, in this video we're going to look at what is meant by fixed point binary and how we can convert from fixed point binary to decimal and vice versa. So first of all, what you know, why are we doing this? Why do we need fixed point binary? Well, it's there to represent real numbers. And a real number is a number which has both an integer and a fractional part. So far, we've looked only at how we can convert integers and use integers in various arithmetic, but clearly maths isn't very useful if you can only stick to integers, and so we need to be able to represent fractions too in binary. And that's what fixed point can do, along with floating point. So really we have two options for representing real numbers, fixed point or floating point. Both have got pros and cons, and we'll look at floating point in future videos, as well as a proper evaluation after we look at both. But before we do that, we can start thinking about one limitation, which is inherent to just using binary and converting from decimal to binary. We have infinite real numbers, right? We could imagine a number line and can imagine picking a point on this line, zooming in, picking another point, zooming in, picking another point, and getting a really, really long fraction. The issue being, we only have a finite amount of bits to represent them. You know, you can only use so many bits in a computer to represent an infinite amount of numbers. And inevitably, this is going to result in a lack of precision, meaning we cannot always be accurate in our representations. We are often just estimating and are trying to get as close as possible with our constraints. Also, as we'll see, we're going to be using binary fractions, which means if we want to be able to accurately, precisely represent a decimal number, it needs to align with the binary fractions we've got available to us in our number of bits. And it doesn't always work totally, and so we get estimations. And in future videos, we'll look at how we can start to calculate and quantify this lack of precision. But for now, it's time to talk about what exactly fixed point notation is. It's actually not particularly hard because it uses the same principle as we do in decimal or deanery. So the idea being that our table, we know hopefully by now in loads of detail of a table. So we can have, so for example here, 136.75. In decimal, we're representing our place value. In terms of our integer, we've got 1, then 10, then 100. But we can also go the other way. We can also divide by 10 each time. We times by 10 going forwards on the left. We can now divide by 10 each time. So now our first digit after our decimal point is it representing a tenth, then a hundred, then a thousand, and so on and so on. We're just dividing by 10 for each place value digit after our decimal point. So moving left, our column headings are times it by 10. Moving right of our decimal point, they're dividing by 10. This is because our fundamentally our column headings are just our base to the power of zero, and the power of one, and so on and so on. We can go the other way. We can go into negative exponents. So for example, 10 power minus one is the same as saying one tenth. 10 to the power minus two is the same as saying one over 10 squared, which is one over 100. And we're just mapping that principle into binary, which uses base two as opposed to base 10. So this same number, 136.75, in fixed point binary is this number here. So you've got my table structure at the top, but we can see the binary number at the bottom plus a, a point, which is now not called a decimal point, is called a binary point. So really important, I'm sure I'll call it a decimal point by mistake at some point, but it is a binary point, also called a radix point. Sometimes radix is a more general word. Radix also means base. But now it's a binary point. You can see our headings, on the left at least, are the same as the ones we're used to. They're just timesing by two each time. With the same idea, right? This is now two to power two, two to power three, and so on and so on. So our exponents are raising by one each time. Whereas when we're going to the other side, we're now getting two to power minus one, which is a half. 2 to the power minus 2, which is now 1 over 2 squared, which is a quarter, and so on and so on moving forwards. So I'm representing this binary number with this binary point embedded within it, but actually we don't explicitly store the binary point in memory. There's not an ASCII bullet point sat there, because we just need to store, we just need to know where the binary point will be relative to the other bits. So for example, it might have it stored, well, it, we, took, we know that it's stored before the nibble, but it's in a fixed point. So we, we know where it is, it's just not always directly stored. So it might just be stored as a long binary number, you might get given a byte and are told that the binary point is between the two nibbles, it'll be something like that. But anyway, going back to how we would use this number in our conversion, say we were given this binary number with or without a binary point in that position, we need to calculate what decimal number this is. And all we're doing it like normal is multiplying our row by our heading. So here we've got one lot of 128 plus one lot of eight, which gives us 136 on our integer side. And on our fraction side, we've got a half plus a quarter, and that gives us 0.75. Therefore, we can kind of add the two together and we get 136.75. 
So actually converting from fixed point into binary is not very hard at all. Same idea, we're just multiplying by our headings and our headings in our case are now dividing by two as we go past our binary point. So let me show you a few examples of going from decimal into fixed point binary because it's a little bit trickier, not much trickier, but it's still worth showing. If you feel comfortable, you might want to try these before I show them, or if you feel really comfortable, you can stop watching here, of course. So first of all, representing 22 in 6.25. Well, we can do 22 on its own first of all as an integer because we can kind of think of them as separate, to be honest. So let's just do one as our headings, one, two, four, eight, 16. We don't need 32 because it's above 22 and we're not given a particular length specified. We're not given, say, a byte. Uh, so, 16, how many times does it go into 22? It goes in once, remainder 6, so 8 is bigger than 6, 4 goes in, remainder 2, and that is our integer part, 10110. Now we have a binary point, in fact, I should probably do it a bit further below, you can ignore that, it's part of my line, uh, and now we are doing our fraction parts. So we, we're now going to a half, which I would always write as 0 0.5, it's easy to visualise for me at least, and then we're going to a quarter, 0 0.25, and then an eighth, which is 0.125, and so on and so on. But we're not gonna to need to go further than those, I can see already, because we're just now doing, well, what is 0.625 in binary? So what is, how many times is 0.5 going to this? It goes in once. What is our remainder? Well, if we take away 0.5 from this, we're gonna get 0.125, so therefore 0.25 is bigger than 0.125, so we put a zero here, and then we've got, thankfully, 0.125 over here down a 1. So that is our answer, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, then a binary point, then 1, 0, 1. Question 2 is a little bit more involved because we're now trying to use it with 2's complement, which of course we can, there's no reason not to. We're representing now minus 4.25 and it's given us the actual length 5 bits for the integer and 3 bits for the fraction. So um, we want to do all of this as a whole this time. We've got 8 bits in t total, 5 plus 3, so we've got 8 bits representing this. So first of all, let's just do our integer part, so we're doing 1, 2, uh, 4, 8, and then our fifth column heading is going to be a negative column, because it's 2's complement, we'll do negative, uh, what is it, 16, like this, okay, and then let's go other side of our brand new point, like so, we've now got 3 bits here, so same as before, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0.125, like this, okay, so, more than one way you could do this in two's complement, this is just the way I've chosen to do it uh, for now. So, um, right, we're now doing negative uh, 4.25. So we've got to put a 1 here for negative 16. It's just how two's complement works because it's a negative number. So, what is the difference between negative 16 and negative 4.25? Well, the difference is going to be 11.75. So now we're looking to see what goes into this. So, 8 goes into this once, remained uh, 3.75. 4 doesn't go into this, 2 does go into it once, remainder 1.75, uh, 1 goes into this once, remainder 0 0.75, and now we go into our fractional part, uh, 0 0.5 doesn't go into, one, uh, sorry, it does go into one point, uh, 0 0.75 once, remainder 0 0.25, therefore 0, 0 0.25 goes into it once, remainder 0, and so we just have to write a 0 under the 0 0.125's column, because we're told it needs to be uh, three bits for a fraction, we've got to make sure we follow those rules, otherwise it won't work properly. So that was our answer. It's a little bit, tiny bit more tricky in two's complement, but not massively. Uh, so the answer here would be 11011, then your binary point, then 110. Right, third question, we're now going to represent 1.8 in unsigned binary. So a slight trick question if you try this one, and forgive me for not having a pink pen, but here, first of all, the integer part we can do straight away. So we're going to do just a ones column. Don't need any more than this. We're not specified. It's, it's got to be a nibble or something like that. We've just got one column. And then after our decimal point, we're going to do our 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125. We can keep going if we want to. 0 0.0625 is after that, 1 16th and so on. Uh, so this is such a question because this goes back to my comment at the start of this video, it's not always possible to represent decimal numbers in a binary fraction, just because it just doesn't quite match exactly, it's a different number system. So we're going to have a 1 under a 1, because we've got that uh, integer part, but in terms of representing 0 0.8 is a bit trickier, right, it's a bit more of a head scratcher, because 0 0.5 goes into it once, right, remainder 0 0.3, 0 0.25 goes into 0 0.3 once, remainder uh, 0 0.05, now 0.125 doesn't go into it, but 0.065 also doesn't go into it, so we can keep going a little bit, which is 0.03125. 
which does go into it, goes in once, remainder, remainder something, which I'm not going to work out in my head. But the idea is it's going to keep going on forever. We're never ever going to totally be able to represent 0.8 in binary fractions. We'll be able to get close, we'll be able to get a decent estimation at some point, but eventually it's going to get really, really close to 0.8, but never quite reach 1.8. So that's something to consider when doing binary numbers. Uh, you can't always convert pro c completely, but we can usually convert to a decent amount of precision if we have loads and loads of bits. But be aware that you can't always do things perfectly, especially with only a few uh, places after, you after your binary point.